Hello, I'm Julian. Um, I'm the CTO and co-founder of Datakin. And uh, today I'm going to talk about data lineage and observability with open lineage. So to start, um, I'll start by talking a bit about the need for metadata and state the problem we're solving here. And then I'll talk about the solution, um, in particular talking about open lineage, the open standard for lineage collection and Marquez its reference implementation. And I'll finish by uh, discuss uh, a bit of how that works in practice and show you a couple of examples of uh, usage of open lineage. So first, I'll start by talking about um, the need for metadata. And uh, this raises from the fact that we are consuming and producing more and more data. And it's not necessarily about the volume of data, uh, even though like there are more and more different data sets and tables and different locations they are uh, stored in. But it's also about um, an organization uh, grows uh, like in a company in an organization there are a lot of different teams that consume and produce data and within their own team their own practice they're fairly they know fairly well how it works and how they depend on each other but across teams um, it's often where the friction happens um, and this is, you know, like people talk about data ops, data mesh, uh, different of those practices and really treating the data as a product. And um, if we draw a parallel to service, service oriented architecture or microservices, you know, you have different teams that expose interfaces. And in a service world, the interface is an API. In the data world, the interface is the data set. Um, so it's really important to start understanding where the data you're consuming is coming from, or who's consuming the data you're producing, and have visibility across those teams. Otherwise, every time something changes, um, it's hard to communicate, and it's hard to understand how we depend on each other. And so today, uh, very often, we have a limited context, right? So we know we have to compute um, and consume data, but it's, you know, it's not always clear where is the data source? What is the schema? Who owns it? How often it's updated? Uh, where it's coming from? Who's using the data? What has changed, right? Like some like, where is it coming from? Where, who's consuming the data I'm producing? What the schema is supposed to be? How often is it changing? All those things. Um, are very unclear, which makes it very difficult uh, to consume data and transform it and produce metrics or models of various things in a reliable way. And so that leads us to, I've borrowed this Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And you know, the original Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it starts with, before you start looking into happiness, right? There's some basic needs you need before you can even like have a live a happy life. First, you worry about um, food and shelter, right? Once you have food and shelter, you worry about safety, uh, and then and so on, right? And once you those basic needs are fulfilled, then you can think about happiness. Uh, how do I become the best version of myself, or whatever goals you set for yourself, and so in this data hierarchy of needs, there are lots of basic things that need to be covered before you can even think about um, taking advantage of your data of uh, getting value out of it. First, the data needs to be available. You know, you need to, wherever it's coming from, um, you need to be able to collect this data. Second, it needs to be updated in a timely fashion, right? Like if you have stale data, you can't make good decision. And third, it needs to be correct, right? You need your data to be available, to show up on time and be correct. And once you have all those things achieved, then you can start into, okay, what are business optimizations we need to do? Uh, how do we find new business opportunities? How do we actually get value out of our data. And this is really getting those three first levels uh, 
correct is really what's going to help you get your head above the water. So that's why I was drawing this line here. It's like, as long as you're spending all your time figuring out why you know your pipelines are broken or why they're taking a long time or why is um, or making sure your data is correct, you are not actually spending your time on actually getting value out of your data. And so that's why um, we started building open init, right? And in the past, uh, you know, so obviously I've um, been the co-creator of Parquet and later on I've been involved in um, the start of the Apache Arrow project um, and really building those standard in open source. And some of the things we did for Apache Arrow is to reach out to a wide group of people who were interested in a standard, having a standard representation to enable um, exchange of data in a performant way between various systems. And so we really took a page out of this uh, for the Open Lineage project. And so it came from the realization, well, if we want to enable uh, observability and really enable collection of lineage for data pipeline lineage and all the related metadata, this needs to be a standard that can be shared across the ecosystem. And so, you know, Open Lineage uh, draws a parallel with Open Telemetry, which Open Telemetry is this project part of the CNCF about collecting traces and metrics for services. And that helps understanding dependencies between microservices, for example, or any service oriented architecture, and, and building observability for that. So open lineage is really the same thing for data pipelines and data pipelines work in a fairly different way. So we started open lineage by reaching out to a wide group of uh, people in the data ecosystem um, and we've been and talking to them 90% um, of the time people agree that yes, we need a standard for collecting lineage and why don't we have it already? And so, well, the reason we didn't have that yet is because we need to get together and actually start it, right? Like if nobody starts defining a standard for collecting lineage in the ecosystem, it's not going to happen by itself. And so by getting together and really uh, discussing how we can define this, this uh, standard and make it happen, really get this effort started. And so that's what we did last year um, in starting this Open Lineage project and getting uh, contributors and creators of uh, many of the important um, open source data project uh, to contribute to this spec. And so the purpose of Open Lineage, right? So defining it as an open standard for metadata and lineage collection by instrumenting data pipelines as they're running. And so to make it simple, you know how in your digital camera or smartphones today, when you take a picture, it actually saves a lot of metadata in the picture itself, right? It's going to save the uh, GPS coordinates where the picture was taken, when it was taken, uh, some other information about the characteristic of the lens of the mode being used. And the best time to capture this metadata about the picture is when it's taken. And so, you know, that's what Open Lineage is. Open Lineage is the EXIF for data pipelines. It is standard to capture the metadata about the job at the time it ran. And so, and this is the best time to understand, you know, the characteristic of the job, what was um, the state of the data set when you consume it, uh, what was the schema, some other runtime information, and so on. And, and having this standard, it solved really an architectural problem, right? There are a lot of projects that are interested in consuming lineage, and there are a lot of projects uh, that may produce lineage or have inherently lineage because they're uh, transforming data. And before Open Lineage, there was a lot of duplication of effort. Each project uh, that cares about metadata or lineage has to instrument all possible types of job to extract information. So it's this picture on the left here where 
whether your data catalog or a governance product or a discovery, a data discovery, uh, any type of system of operational system, you need to integrate with all those uh, transformation, uh, framework, processing systems, uh, warehouses to collect the lineage. And so it introduces a lot of duplication of effort. Each project has to instrument all the jobs. Um, and also it makes it, the whole thing very brittle because integrations are external and can break with new versions. Not only you have to deal with Spark versus BigQuery versus Snowflake versus Presto, you also have to deal with evolution of all those things, all the versions of Spark and so on, right? And so depending on the internal of each of the system to understand lineage becomes very brittle, very expensive, very complex. So with Open Lineage, there are a lot of multiple uh, advantages. One is that the effort of integration is shared, right? Once we expose Lineage in the common standard, you can leverage that across multiple projects that consume Lineage. And second, integration can also be pushed in each project. Instead, now Open Lineage becomes a standard interface, right? So you can pull that into each of those projects. And instead of having external integration that pull the lineage from each of those systems by understanding their internals, you can have each of those um, lineage producing system to expose it in the open lineage representation so that it evolves with them, right? You don't have to worry about evolution of the internal because now, it, the open lineage exposure of the lineage evolves with each of the project. So it's really kind of, you know, in um, software design, this is known as um, inversion of dependency, right? We, instead of having each of those um, lineage interested consumer project depend on each of those projects, all of those projects depend on open lineage, which uh, remove the dependency and everybody depends on open lineage and it removes this uh, N square, so to speak, uh, dependencies uh, here. So to clarify the scope, right? Open lineage is really like open telemetry. It is the spec and the integration and the ability to expose lineage. It is not any of the storage or use cases that you can build on top of the lineage. So in the consumers, of course, Marquez is a reference implementation of the open lineage uh, spec. And so open lineage defines how you collect metadata, how you represent it. And then projects like Marquez, Data Hub, and Munson and Nigeria can consume open lineage um, and um, to leverage it to make lineage um, available in their system. And I, here I'm putting examples of the open source world, but really um, that's applicable to many, to any other um, lineage focused uh, system. And the interesting part, he, part here is like when you talk about lineage, um, different people will have different definitions of what lineage is. And so very often you have dedicated uh, products or projects or UIs for various projects, right? You may be interested more in operations, uh, reliability of your data, data quality. You may be interested more in data discovery, data catalog. You may be uh, more interested in governance, compliance, um, or in privacy and like enforcing things like GDPR or CCPA. And all those use cases are very different, but they all rely in some way on also understanding lineage. And some of them may define lineage uh, as understanding how this column is derived from other columns in core data set. It could be understanding as, oh, the update of this data set depends on the execution of this job that consuming those other data set, or it may be interested in knowing how this, um, PII user private information column is being consumed and where it's being um, copied in your warehouse. <clears throat> so if we look at the core model of um, Open Lineage, Open Lineage is defined as a JSON schema spec. 
So we, sh as a core model of understanding jobs and runs and data sets. And from that, we can attach various species of metadata around it. So the core model is very simple. You have a notion of job, and a job is a recurring transformation that can happen. It could be a SQL query. It could be a Spark job. It could be a Flink job. Um, it could be a Python script that reads data and produces data and is recurring, um, is running um, multiple times. A run is a particular instance of this job running. So it could be running at a specific time for a specific schedule. It has um, it could have specific parameters and so on. The data set is um, a representation of data. So it could be a table. It could be a folder in the distributed file system something like S3 or HDFS or GCS. And so we, you, we have this core model of lineage where you will have a job is running for a specific run ID and it's reading and writing specific data sets. So that's the core of the model. And this is some of the very important things here is how we build consistent naming for jobs uh, based on what scheduler is scheduling in it. So typically you can build a um, hierarchical name from scheduler job task. And for data set in a similar way to be able to stitch the lineage back together, understanding consistent names for data set is really important. And that's part of the spec. How do you consistently name jobs and data set? So once you have this core model of knowing that there's a particular run for a particular job that read and wrote to data set, then the notion of facet is what enables attaching various uh, aspect of metadata to this core model. And that's where you could have run facet, job facet, data set facet that are about metadata specific to each of those uh, elements. And I'm going to um, go into details about facet in a second. And really, the, the only thing that Open Lineage depends on is having some asynchronous protocol. So it could be HTTP, it could be a Kafka queue, uh, it could be something like that. Basically, you're going to start send a start event when the job starts, and a, a unique run ID is going to help correlate the start event and the end event. Um, <clears throat> so when the job starts, you may be sending a start event saying this job ID uh, is starting a run with this run ID, and it's reading from those data sets. And then you start a complete event um, that will tell you that the job is finished, um, and you may capture uh, what was the input data set, what was the output data set version, and schema at the time the job ran, and really making observation about what happened. This particular job, and this is a version of the source code that was run, uh, possibly this particular C SQL, those were the parameters. Um, this is the query profile uh, that we collected when the job was finished. Here's the schema of the input at the time it, it ran. Here's the schema of the output at the time it ran, and so on. And so that helps really understand what the run did and collect all the metadata around it. And so this notion of facet is really a mechanism uh, to make the model flexible, right? One of the goals of the open lineage spec is to avoid having this big monolithic spec that takes a long time to build consensus on. And instead, by having the, the notion of facet, each of those facets is its own atomic spec that focuses on one specific aspect of the metadata. For example, you can have a data set facet that focuses on the schema. And we model the schema of a data set in a certain way. And that's one facet. You may have um, another facet, which is <clears throat> what's the query plan uh, for um, the particular job. You can have a facet, which is um, what was the version of the input uh, if you use um, underlying storage format like Delta Lake or Iceberg that actually capture the version of the data set. And 
So it's really make this extensible model that it's really easy to focus on various aspects of the metadata. And we may have a conversation about what's the data quality metric facet, uh, what's the schema facet, what's the model uh, quality uh, metric facet, and it's different for machine learning, or a lot of those different aspects of metadata we may want to capture. And so it really makes it easier to have focused discussion and optional aspect to the data. And it also makes it easier to specialize uh, the spec for different type of storage. For example, a uh, streaming data set like a Kafka topic will have very different facet from a table data set like a table in a warehouse or a folder uh, in the distributed file system. So that lets you facilitate adding a various species of optional metadata depending on the type of underlying job or data set, and uh, it has lots of flexibility. It's also decentralized because to help people experiment and be able to create facets without having to go through a validation on uh, building consensus uh, process, you can make your own custom facet all you have to do is publish uh, adjacent schemas um, for it. And then you can add custom facet to the spec and start collecting them as part of the model. So this is really about making it really easy for people to adapt and experiment with open image. And to give you some examples of facets, uh, you know, at a data set level, you may be interested in capturing statistics for data quality, for example, um, you know, uh, mean, max, number of nulls, distribution of a column, for example. You'd be able to capture schema so that we ca can capture how the schema of a data set changes over time. The, ver the version, if the underlying format is version, the column level lineage, if that's important uh, to you. At the job level, you may be capturing what was the version of the job at the time it ran, what were the dependencies or the versions of the dependencies, um, where is it stored in source control? What was the query plan? At the run level, uh, you may care about uh, the schedule time, the batch ID, if that's a thing in their scheduling model, what was the query profiles, or what parameters were passed uh, to the particular run, or hyperparameters, for example. And so that's open lineage making observation about the job that's running. And Marquez is a reference implementation that consumes uh, those open lineage events and keeps tracks of all the changes. So really, the way you use Marquez is this, uh, you have a Marquez instance, and you may be monitoring, like building observability for an entire data platform, right? So if here, I'm making this hypothetical example of a data platform. So typically, you have an ingest layer where data comes in and you ingest data. And then you would have storage and compute layer. So typically, in your storage layer, you have two tiers, uh, one streaming, you may be using Kafka, and one for data in motion, and then one data at rest storage where data gets archived into a distributed file system, something like S3, HDFS, GCS. You might be using Iceberg for <coughs> making sure you have a good uh, underlying um, table abstraction for your data storage. And then in the compute layer, you may use something like Flink or Spark streaming uh, for, for streaming. And the batch side, you may be using something like Spark or a warehouse like Snowflake or BigQuery or Redshift, and some maybe probably Python, uh, Pandas, different type of transformation as well. And might be using a scheduler like Airflow to schedule all those things. And then typically you have a BI layer, or you may also use your data into your product as uh, through machine learning, recommendation engine, and so on. And so Open Lineage is about collecting lineage information and metadata about everything that's happening in this platform. And Marquez is a central way to store it and keep track of what has changed. So you'd see that the Marquez model reuses some of those same notion, but where Open Lineage is making observation and modeling the job that is running, it's, it's telling you, well, this job is running and it's reading from this data set and running to this data set. 
Marquez is really about keeping track of how that changes over time, right? So every time the job runs and writes your data set, it's going to create a new version of the metadata in the engine because this job has run and it's creating a new version of the data set. And we're going to keep track of the metadata. So if this particular run of a job changes the schema of its output, we're going to capture it. Right? And the run will also have like the facet information about performance, like the query profiles, for example. And the job will keep track of what was the current version of the job, um, what's the current Git SHA, for example, and so on. So you keep track of everything that has changed um, <clears throat> as things are running. And so Open Lineage is about collecting uh, lineage information. Marquez keep track of all the changes. And what we do at Datakin to kind of situate all those things is just build on top of Marquez to enable understanding of operational dependencies, impact analysis, troubleshooting, and like really building this lineage analysis and enabling troubleshooting. What has changed since the last time it worked? Where is the bottleneck? Why is my pipeline slow? Why is the data showing up late? And it's all leveraging all the data collected is through open image and markets. And so now I'm going to go a little bit over. Now we talked about the problem and why we built open image and where it's coming from. I'll talk a bit about what you can do in practice uh, with open image and markets um, using this metadata. And so today, as of integration that are covered uh, with Open Lineage, you can uh, integrate with Apache Airflow. Uh, as part of that, uh, you will have integration with warehouses like Snowflake, BigQuery, Redshift. Um, and uh, we also have integration with Apache Spark. And so all those things are covered out of the box. And so if you're using those tools, you will really be able to lineage um, and understanding how things depend on each other and how things change over time. What's currently in beta and uh, being added is the great expectation and dbt coverage. So dbt is this newer framework um, for building SQL transformations um, that's becoming very popular. And so there's a currently um, beta uh, integration with dbt in progress. And great expectation is a popular library um, to um, build data quality, right? You can define um, assertions, uh, build expectations on your data and validate them. And at the same time, it also collects um, statistics and so you can keep track with open lineage and markets of the evolution of those statistics over time. So it's kind of like the uh, current ecosystem. And of course, there's a lot of integration that are being planned or people want to contribute. Things like Prefect, um, other data quality libraries like DQ, um, other processing framework like Flink, or looking into streaming as well and dealing with Kafka and so on. And so that's kind of to give you an overview of uh, what already works with the project at the current time. So when using with Airflow, um, the way this works is you just install uh, the Mar Marquez Airflow uh, Python package. And so to add um, Marquez as a plugin, so to speak, to your Airflow integration, and you can just configure it to point to your Marquez instance and start collecting uh, open lineage event. When you use the Spark integration, there's a similar uh, mechanism when you can add, use the Spark driver extra Java option to add the Marquez integration and point it to um, the endpoint where you're going to be able to collect lineage. And so metadata being collected, uh, across the board. So of course, lineage for each job, what are the inputs and outputs? Um, what was the data volume in the input and output? And that's very important to start building, uh, you know, the first step of data quality and keeping track of how much volume was produced and if there's any suspicious change. And so that works across things like Spark and BigQuery, for example. It keeps track of the logical plan, uh, for example, you can keep track of what the plan was for BigQuery, what the plan was for 
um, spark and see how that changes over time, if, the, if that impacts your performance. Um, it keeps track of the schema uh, to see if the schema of the inputs and outputs has changed and what particular run of a job has changed the schema of the output, how long it took to process and so on. <clears throat> and so when we look at the model, there's also often a notion of nested uh, jobs, right? If we think about Airflow, Airflow will have a notion of DAG, which is the top level job in Airflow, and then individual tasks inside your Airflow DAG are executed as independent uh, run instance. And then when you run a Spark job, for example, you may have a Python task in Airflow that spawns a JVM process, which is your Spark job. And this process will itself run multiple actions, right? Like every time you write to something in your Spark job, it's, it starts a different job. So in the open lineage model, each of those actions is collected independently and we keep track of this nesting notion through uh, this notion of parent job. And keep being track how this nesting works. Um, and so to give you an example, you know, since we, thanks to this consistent naming of jobs and data sets, we can stitch back the lineage. So you may have multiple uh, workflows or multiple Spark job that do multiple transformation, and that helps stitching these things back together and build this lineage graph. <clears throat> and so some examples, and because we keep track of, you know, I talk about how we're keeping track of the row count in the output, you can start keeping track of the evolution of the size of the data set over time, right? And for each of those updates, it's actually connected to the lineage graph. So you know exactly uh, if the number of rows drop in a data set, for example, you know exactly what particular run of the job produces this drop. And so that will help you actually investigate and keep track of that run level lineage to know exactly where this problem is coming from. And you can easily correlate this to the upstream dependency that um, what data set you depending on, is there a correlated drop in number of rows in an upstream data set for this particular version. And um, so that's, you know, the raw count by count is what is collected um, across the board through the regular integration. And if you use something like great expectation on top of that, you can start also collecting column level metrics and start keeping track uh, for each individual method. So not just like having a coarse grain data quality metrics, like number of rows, but also adding um, information like the distribution of a column or number of nulls and so on, and uh, keep track of those changes over time. <clears throat> And so that's for um, the information uh, we collect. So of course you can join the, the conversation. Open Lineage and Marquez are part of the LFAI and Data Foundation, uh, which is uh, you know a sister foundation of the CNCF. They're both under the umbrella of the Linux Foundation, um, which really enforces that those projects have a clear governance. They're not owned by anybody and it's really kind of a community driven effort. And it's really uh, owned by the community for the community. So you can check out those projects on GitHub. Um, you can join the Slack if you have questions, if you're curious about learning more. Um, they also, of course, have a Twitter account. Um, <clears throat> and so we are looking forward um, to see you um, join the conversation. <clears throat> and on this, um, this is it for my uh, presentation today. Okay, so I am just check them. We didn't have questions so far, so maybe I will start with one question. Um, I'm I'm really excited to see that somehow it's like in the last decade we have been trying to solve uh, how to do data in, in a massive scale, but not resolving how to do data, proper data engineering, like the top level of this. And, and finally, it's nice to see that this is starting to happen. So this is pretty cool. 
my, my question is about, because the, since this is observability, how, how, what sort of synergies do you see with the other observability projects from the CNCF side? Because some are similar, like, well, in the same space, let's say. Oh, um, yes. So I think clearly to me, the only way we can solve this is through open source and having this kind of project that helps defining a standard because otherwise there's so much complexity in all those projects and so much fragmentation. Uh, you really want to have uh, developed this standard and really enable everybody to expose the lineage in a standard way. So which is what we're doing. And really, yes, there's lots, like in many ways, the service space is a lot more mature, like service observability is a lot more mature than data pipelines observability. Uh, like you were mentioning, right? We've been focusing on this big data aspect and people were caring about, oh, how do we scale processing? How do we consume, produce so, many, so much data? But the other problem is not just the, the volume of data aspect, but it's like how many data sets we have, like the volume of many tables, many jobs, many transformations, and many people being involved in it, right? So it's kind of like, the, the big data problem is also a size of the organization of like the lack of visibility, a number of data set problem, which is what observability um, helps solving. And so, right, that's why Open Lineage really is name is really taking like temp, open telemetry as a template, right? Um, it's like open telemetry standardizes collecting traces. And these traces are really traces of services is really the lineage of data. And so eventually, you know, you ev even would uh, connect both, right? When you um, collect your lineage, if you're caring about the SQL level lineage, and then you go up to the data that as it comes in, it may be coming from a Kafka topic, and in this Kafka topic, some service is writing to it because you're instrumenting them. Mm -hmm. And the service is writing to this Kafka topic because it's receiving a request from another service. So really the lineage goes all the way upstream in services as well. And that's where you start, you could start connecting open telemetry traces with the open lineage, uh, lineage events and start like understanding lineage from a click on a website all the way to your Tableau dashboard or, you know, whether you use Tableau or Looker or all of those things, right? So it's really the eventual goal of Open Lineage is to really be able to cover this whole picture and connect everything uh, together and understand from an observability standpoint, every, everything that's happening and where it's coming from and why it's happening. Okay, thank you. I'm just going to check if there's another question, maybe, just a second. Uh, yes, there is more. I'm going to ask for the first one who has three votes. Uh, any challenges specific to streaming? How jobs would be identified by, uh, for instance? Yeah, so, you know, in streaming, I think the, the, the intuition is like a streaming job is a constantly running job, right, versus a bad job that runs like every hour or something. Um, but actually, a streaming job still has discrete runs, right? So you can identify a streaming job and the high-level lineage still works the same. Like a, a streaming job will have a, a unique name that identifies it. And uh, Kafka topics can be identified. You know, you have a topic in a broker, so you can still um, build those data sets out of them. So, of course, the metadata is different. Then when you start your streaming job, you will have a start event that says like, oh, this particular run of this streaming job is starting, and you're interested in capturing what's the version of the source code, um, where it started reading in the topic. You may be, and on the Kafka level, for example, you'd be interested in capturing the offsets of where you started reading. And then at some point in the future, you're going to stop this job and maybe upgrade dependencies or like update and redeploy it. Um, and so it's going to stop and you are going to redeploy a new version of the code and start it again. And it's going to resume where it stopped reading from uh, the Kafka topic. So typically when you map it to open lineage, you would think about having a start event and an end event and capturing where you stopped reading in a Kafka topic, like by capturing the offsets, for example, uh, from an observability standpoint. 
uh, and then we start again with a new version and possibly it might be changing the schema in its output if you updated your logic and you're writing different information. So depending of what type of data modeling you use, you may be using Avro, you might be using Protobuf, you might be using a schema registry. Uh, you know, this is all sort of metadata you would want to capture. At the time of the job restarted, it's starting writing this new schema, right? And make those observations and starting sending open lineage event. And open lineage event don't have to be just the start or the end. So you can send more event along the way for capturing information about, oh, the schema has changed at this particular point in time and keeping track of those things um, as part of the metadata. So um, open lineage started more on the batch side, but definitely it's in the scope of capturing streaming. And those are some like thoughts uh, we had about where streaming modeling could be going to be part of that spec. 